live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015, brought to you by HP. And now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to HP Discover 2015, everybody. This is the Cube. The Cube has been documenting the turnaround of HP, and we're really seeing HP starting to transform itself, transform the industry. Steve Deitch is here, he's Vice President of Cloud at HP, and Yang Peng, who's the CEO of Union Reed, a CDN based in China. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you. you. Steve, good to see you again. Great to be back. It's a high energy, a yeah. lot of action here going on at HP Discover. Yeah, there is. I was saying you got some good love at the keynote this morning, or this afternoon. We did. HP using that stuff internally, and, uh, and you're getting traction externally, so how do you feel? I feel pretty good. I mean, since we last talked, what it was several months back, yeah. um, the momentum continues. Um, you know, we've uh, the the strategy we laid out three years ago and continue to execute a consistent strategy. By the by the way, um, about the world going open and hybrid is clearly playing out. Um, customers are making decisions on what applications are going to stay on prem and what are going to go off prem, and they need a a very effective way to manage that complexity uh, and get all the benefits of a hybrid IT environment, and, and you know our customers are coming to us and looking for that. Uh, you know We made some really exciting announcements yesterday that just further the execution of that strategy. Um, both Cloud System 9, which we've talked about before, the, the latest version of our flagship on-prem offering, private cloud, but also I call it our hybrid IT anchor. Uh, and uh, I like to say as customers are going through their journey from private cloud with traditional apps to new native with OpenStack to managing multiple clouds, you've actually got a solution from Hewlett Packard that, it, that addresses all three of those elements in one solution. Management layer, traditional apps, Helium OpenStack, and the management of off-prem, all part of it. I, I mean, we're really excited actually, and, and I mean, the, I, I'd say really the, the operative word right now is execution against that strategy. All right, so Yang, let, let me bring you into the discussion. Tell us about Union Reed. Uh, tell us about the company and its history and where you're at. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Yang Peng, and I'm the CEO of Union Reed. We started this company in 2009, and uh, it uh, has been offering CDN services, the content distribution networking uh, since then. And we partner with China Telecom and China Unicom in China, and uh, our business go very fast. Yeah, I'll bet. So, I mean, any partnership with China Telecom, you better be prepared to grow fast, <laughs> right? You know? So yeah. specifically, what kind of CDN services do you provide to, to telcos? Oh, so, so currently we provide the CDN services for internet play players. So basically we deploy the, about the 200 loads in, uh, around the country, about in 200 uh, IDCs, and we provide the bandwidth and the speeding uh, services for the CDN. Yeah. I see, so um, how many people in your company? I mean, can you give us a sense of how large? Uh, we, we are about uh, 100 people, uh -huh. and uh, many are developers. Yeah. yeah, and now what's your relationship with HP? Well, we are the first uh, deployers for uh, HP Healing in China uh, since last uh, August, uh, August, and uh, we are happy we can partner with HP to deploy the open stack based solution for cloud services offering in China. So you're using OpenStack? Yeah. Okay, well, can you tell me more about what you're doing with, with OpenStack and, and why, why you choose OpenStack? Well, uh, firstly, it's open. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's in the name. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you, you know mainly the reason we use OpenStack is because we, we saw the customer in China are, are facing um, lots of challenges in terms of cloud services. We know lots of people about uh, uh, 70 p uh, uh, seventy percent of the high uh, or big uh, enterprise already uh, deployed the uh, private cloud solution, but uh, in uh, in this year maybe more and more people uh, people and the enterprise would like to embrace the hybrid IT or hybrid uh, cloud solution. So uh, our customer tell us. They are, they are facing challenges in terms of uh, security, cost saving, scalability, and uh, you know, 
a productivity is kind of, of issue with cloud solutions. So they they want to use OpenStack to resolve these challenges. So Steve, it sounds very similar to the story we hear from a lot of customers in the U.S. and, and Europe. I, I, I'm, I don't have a ton of experience in China. What, what are you seeing in terms of the adoption of, of, of you know, technology in general, but specifically cloud technology in, in, uh, in China, that region? Yeah. In, in China and across Asia Pacific, it's exploding at this point. In a lot of cases, a lot of greenfield activity. Um, but uh, we actually, we, we see a very balanced business for cloud at HP. I mean, there isn't one region dominating the other. China is, is, is equally as large as the other regions. Right. Um, uh, at, you know, as we look at the cloud business, um, the unique thing around uh, China is just the mammoth scale that we're dealing with. Um, you know, uh, that Union Reed is dealing with China Telecom, China Mobile. These are not mom and pop service providers. <laughs> you know, China Mobile has how many? 700 million subscribers yeah. or 600 million subscribers? Some yeah. on a massive scale. And uh, so providing services to somebody that is not the faint of heart. Union Reed actually, which we didn't met, is the first Chinese member of the Healy Network. Ah, okay. Right, so for folks that aren't familiar with the Healy Network, which we announced uh, last year and, and we're, uh, we're driving towards launch uh, on November 1st, is a ecosystem that we're, we've created where service providers, value-added resellers, ISVs, and other partners are going to collaborate with HP to build, deliver uh, hybrid solutions, particularly with Union Read, public and VPC type of solutions in China. I see, so, wh so what do you do specifically with, with, with HP, uh, with cloud and even non-cloud, other, other relationships that you have, services, what's, what? How close is the relationship? How deep does it go? Well, I would say it's, uh, it's very deep. Currently, you know, I mean, HP Healing Network provides a very good platform mm -hmm. uh, to, I mean, the service provider, the VARs, and the, the ASVs, uh, and they help us in all aspects. The, the healing uh, platform based on OpenStack solution, and then the services, I mean, integrated by healing network. And also, you know, uh, the financial innovation, and also the most importantly, the go-to uh, go uh, market strategy and uh, different channels. Uh, in China, you know, uh, because uh, with the CDN business, we have a lot of IDC uh, hosted uh, uh, service as well. So we partner with HP to provide uh, our current CDN business, uh, business customers you know, the, the upper level if they want to change to the host, to the uh, cloud. So it's really, I mean, the synergy is quite uh, quite there. So so we like to partner with HP. Now what specific services do you, what's your unique value that you bring to China Mobile and, and China Telecom that they either can't do themselves yeah. or 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 they, yeah. why you and, and not some other uh, company? What's unique about what either your services? Well, we well, currently, uh, you, you know, we partner with uh, uh, China Telecom and China Telecom is mainly because we focusing on the software development, and uh, you know, uh, they are big operators, and so the main uh, unique uh, uh, stuff with us is uh, the software development and the the uh, maintenance capacity. So we uh, we kind of like uh, do the dirty work for them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, so. Talk a little bit more about the to, to the content that's being distributed in, yeah. in China. You know, here it's all Netflix you know, every night. Everybody downloads <laughs> yeah. their Netflix. What's the Chinese consumer consuming? Yeah, well, it's it's the same. It's very really similar. It's about the the video streaming and the download and also the you know the files, like you you currently you uh, people use smartphone everywhere and uh, they up, uh, upgrade their apps every day, so. Uh, they download not only the video, streaming the video, but they also download the, the files, the apps. It's similar. Yeah. Now, Steve, HP just uh, did announced the deal in China. You divested, uh, you did a joint venture. It actually divested part of, you know, uh, your Chinese operation. What does that mean for you guys? Is that sort of a separate, sort of orthogonal deal? Is it? No, no, no. It, it uh, I, I think it only. Deal, I think or? it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it only benefits. I think everybody, given the collaboration we have with. Uh, with the local entity now. Yes, explain that a little bit. How, how so, does it work? so what HP has done is it sold a majority interest to, and I can't pronounce the. Uh, I can't either. Hingzhua 
Tsinghua, well, Tsinghua, Tsinghua, Tsinghua University, exactly. which is yeah. one of the premier research institutes in China. Um, we've uh, actually now the networking business, which came, which actually that the, the joint venture will be called H3C, mm -hmm. which we already had. You know, our our H our Chinese networking arm was called H3C, so it takes on that name, H3C, and that collaborative joint venture actually brings the servers, the networking, the storage, and our technology services, and fully exploits just the power of the Chinese engine, the distribution, the relationships. Um, both from a governmental uh, on, a, on a nationwide down to the province level. Um, and at the same time, HP maintains uh, full ownership of the cloud business, um, of the software business, and of the enterprise services business. But there's a tight collaboration between of them, and there will be cross-selling. Cross so as we go out and sell cloud, that the, the, the joint venture arm will sell it as well, as well as we will, so it will actually be cross-OEM. Okay, so you have a partner that's, that's local, that's, you know, from a customer standpoint, you, you know them, you trust them, uh, and so it's another distribution channel for you, and it's just more leverage in the region. It's more leverage, and it's, look, you know, there are unique things about the Chinese market that I'm sure all your, your readers are well aware of. Um, this was the best possible way to ensure that our customers were getting the best technology at the best value in the most efficient way. It's clear, it was very clear to us. Mm. So, What's new? Well, I mean, what's next for you guys? I mean, where's the, what's the future hold for your, your company, for you? You know, what's your vision of how you see this, your company evolving and what role will, will cloud play in HP specifically? Well, currently, uh, we, we believe in China, the cloud uh, business will grow very fast. And the, currently, we are trying to involve Four kind of customer uh, from the enter different enterprise, different industry, mainly uh, education, healthcare, transportation, and the mm. Yeah, yeah. And so you have the advantage of a, a lot of a lot of greenfield, we call it, right? So um, meaning you don't have a lot of legacy applications that you would have to rip and replace, right? I mean, new company, fresh start, if you will. So you can grow very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, where do you see the center of, of, of innovation in, in your business? What is it? Uh, is it speeding delivery of content? Is it new types of content? Is it is it enabling new business models? Where do you see the main emphasis of innovation? Well, the ma main uh, emphasis of the uh, innovation would be the uh, the virtual computing and uh, the network virtualization. Th these are what, what we are focusing on. So we believe in the. Uh, Originally in China and in uh, in elsewhere, you need to buy you need to spend lots of capex for you know for your company for your enterprise to do the IT. But currently with the on-demand IT, so the hybrid IT and the uh, all place requirement and, uh, ask for you to do the virtualization. So this is our focusing on. And Steve, you, from your standpoint, HP's challenge obviously is to define cloud as you see the the, the world and as your customers see the world. You're, you're always in a, there's always a marketing tussle, you know, this is cloud, that's not cloud, this is cloud. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. If, you're cl if your customers are efficiently delivering IT services and providing a platform for future, yeah. you know, this digital economy, or what you guys call the, the idea economy, that's really what matters. Um, so, so what does that platform of the future look like? You know, how would you describe that? So, so I'll oversimplify something right now, because it was, and I won't take credit for this explanation or description. I will, uh, one of my HP colleagues, this, and we were having a conversation with a bunch of partners on Monday. And cloud will essentially become, you know, it, let, let's go back 10 years ago, um, when people were talking about, hey, I want to get onto the internet, or I need to go to the web, or whatever. People were doing, now, that sort of, faded away to where you never said, I've got to go on to the internet. <laughs> Cloud will be exactly the same way, wh whether it's next year, five years from now, where it will just become the IT paradigm. It's very, very clear to us. Now, there's, you know, it's it's a distinct thing now. It's, you know, people are confused by it. Uh, you know, the cloud, what is it? You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of comedy in it, actually, at this point, and a lot of confusion. But I see it as, over the next several years, as the confusion subsides the technology uh, matures, I, I see it as being just there. I see it as being the IT thing as we go forward. Well, that's interesting, and that that portends, maybe not so much for Union Reed, because you're a relatively new company, but I, but it portends a reorganization of, of types 
within traditional companies where they may be saying, okay, this today it's something different. Oh, I need a cloud division or a cloud you know, group or cloud brokers and we talk cloud everything, like the old dot com, right? It was Right. So that just sort of gets subsumed. I into. think that is spot on. Right. I think what you're seeing right now is, because if you look at the challenge of the cloud, and we're using it a distinct entity right now, three, three uh, points of the triangle. With technology being one of the three, and being the least important, people and processes are going to be much more important. As you look at fully exploiting the benefits of the cloud, you've got to look at essentially standardization of processes, automation of processes, and so forth, which a lot of people aren't looking at right now. Some are. And then probably the more one is the inertia in the organization. Because to your point, you're spot on. Today you have server admins, storage admins, application developers, networking admins, architects. Maybe that disappears in the future. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have somebody, you know, if you're using shared environments, you may have a cloud architect that takes over, or you may have a cloud administrator or it just becomes an IT administrator. You know, you have examples of customers out there that have drastically reduced the operating resources because they've adopted yeah. it. Or it becomes a software developer. Exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. So I, I think I think you're going to see enormous transformation. I mean, this whole time. talk about infrastructure as code, you guys yeah. have popped on, on yeah. that. I presume you guys are doing a lot of what, what we would call DevOps. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe talk about that a little bit. What's your development environment look like? Yeah. The development is uh, is uh, is really similar. So, but we the doing of uh, ops uh, uh, kind of process we we are uh, apply uh, apply every day. But All right, Steve, we're out of time, but I'm going to leave you the last word because you're so articulate. Um, you are. It's just you. You. I, I, I first met you at VMworld. I think it was 2011. We were a lot younger then. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but we're wiser now. Yeah, so you <laughs> say. So you yeah. say. So we've kind of seen this thing come full circle, right? Yeah. It, all, everything we were talking about in 2011, it's 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 come to fruition today. So, um, how do you sum that up? P tie a bow on where we're at with with cloud. So I I think we actually saw this coming mm -hmm. three four years ago, like you said. You know, the world was going to be open. The world was going to be hybrid. People were going to look, you know, I, you know, I'm amazed at how far it's come, and I'm also surprised at the acceleration now. Um, I, you know, when we met three months ago, when we met last year, I was saying, wow, you know, it's moving along. Um, but it's moving along now. Uh, the biggest striking thing for me over the time is that it's just continuously, it's not slowing down, it's not plateauing out, it's moving faster. Forget all the technology aspects, it's the business models. It's the organizational thinking. Um, it's just business driving the need for what we foresaw three or four years ago. Um, and I see it going faster, not slower. And probably my final word is, the more interesting part of this is, the little guys are going to be the big guys. Meaning that everything we're doing right now and everything we saw is leveling the playing field. The world is flattening and the cloud is flattening the playing field. Flattening field. it out. Steve and Yank, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Well said, I really appreciate your time and uh, it's exciting, you know, we're, we're in the eye of the storm and uh, it's moving fast and it's going to get faster. So may you live in interesting times. I think that was a Chinese proverb and right. we sure do. All right, right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live, HP Discover 2015.